guys are having a big morning of working cattle over on Tim's ranch today, and I'm making them a rib sticking ranch style lunch. They are gonna be hungry when they're finished. To go with the ribs, I'm making twice-baked potato casserole. It's pretty much everything that's wonderful about twice-baked potatoes, but in casserole form. Now, of course, twice-baked potatoes in any form have to have bacon, so I fried up a bunch, and I just need to chop it up. You know, you can use store-bought bacon bits for twice-baked potatoes, but I think nothing is like bacon you fry yourself, particularly when you're cooking for cowboys. They detect things like this. <laughs> they might run me out of town if they find out I used artificial bacon pieces. Okay, I got the bacon all chopped. I'll let that sit for a sec. Now, I've gotta add a lot of butter to this casserole because I baked a lot of potatoes. So I've got four sticks of softened butter. I want it to be really, really soft. Then when the warm potato mixture goes in, it melts really quickly. Okay, and four. And a whole container of sour cream. Everyone likes sour cream with potatoes, let's face it. Okay, now for the potatoes. I've got 16 big baking potatoes, and I rubbed them in a little bit of vegetable oil and then baked them at 400 for about an hour. They're nice and tender, very hot. So I'll just cut it in half. Ooh, nice and hot. And I'll use a little towel so it won't be too hot in my hands. And I like to use just a big tablespoon to slowly scrape the insides out. Okay, that's the last potato scooped and I've got nice little flecks of potato skin all throughout. So now I'll season all of this. It's a lot of potato. So it needs a good amount of salt and of course, plenty of black pepper. And then I also like to add some seasoned salt. It just adds a few different flavors, a little bit of extra saltiness. All right, that looks great. Now I'll throw in all of this delicious bacon. Okay, now the green onions go in. I also grated a lot of cheese, a couple of cups of Cheddar Jack, and I'll sprinkle that over the top. And then I definitely need some milk in here so that everything will mix together well. So I'll just pour in a couple of cups of milk. All right, now I just need to break out my mussels. I've got a potato masher and I'll just go right in and smush all this together. This takes a little while. There are a lot of ingredients in here. The potatoes don't have to be completely smooth, but I don't want there to be any huge chunks. Okay, looks perfect. Get the extra off. Now I'm gonna put all of this into a big foil container. I think it'll all fit. Whenever I'm making twice-baked potatoes for a crowd, it can get a little much to refill the skins after the mixture is done. This is the perfect solution. Just put it into a big pan, warm it up, and it's ready to serve. This looks amazing. There is not a cowboy on the ranch or a kid on the ranch that won't go crazy for this. Okay, now I'll just smooth out the surface. Doesn't have to be perfect. This is a great dish to make if you're having a big party because you can actually make it the day ahead and pop it in the oven when you're ready. I wasn't that organized. <laughs> I did it the same day. Okay, now I'm gonna sprinkle more cheese over the top. The potato mixture has plenty inside, but I like for the top to have a nice layer of melted cheese. This is Cheddar Jack, but you can use all cheddar, all jack, or you could do pepper jack. That's always delicious too. Okay, now this just needs to go back into the oven for about 30 minutes until it's warmed through. Cheesy twice-baked potato casserole. Here are the ribs. Did you guys work up an appetite? I think everybody did. Todd, you want some potatoes? What's up and get the good stuff. <laughs>